Yeah, it's definitely not a mistake to bleach your hair alone with no supervision. Like, and I'm not like one of these people who's living a crazy life out here, like, woohoo, dye my hair all different colors. Just really going for it, huh? Hello, long time no see. Please stop. I'm in a house watching dogs and I'm going to dye my hair. Um, I am not a professional, but I've done this. Uh, okay, I've done this to myself poorly um, and I've done it to, like I'm using bleach basically, like I'm using a 20 volume developer. I think I've only done once with another person, I've never done it to myself. So we'll really see what's gonna happen here. I picked a, um, ooh, Cerise Noir, black cherry. So we're gonna see, basically, I'm going to mix the dye, mix the developer, and also tell you about all the books that I read in January. So hopefully this is fun. There's also dogs here, which I think might complicate things. Um, yeah, and like, there's no one else here, so it's just gonna be me. Um, okay, so first I'm gonna section my hair, then I'm going to mix the bleach, and I'm gonna begin talking about the books. I read three books in January, less than I wanted to, more than I thought I was gonna be able to. Um, and I have to say that it was a very, it was like a weirdly mid month in the sense that I didn't love these books, but at the same time, I thought that they were all still good, which is like a weird way of saying it. One crack crack. Okay. Um, so essentially these books were not bad, but not life-changingly amazing. And the first book that I read, what was it called again? It's called The Furrows by uh, Namwali Serpel. Serpel. Um, this book is about a, a, it's about a family, but mostly about a girl slash woman whose brother goes missing, presumed dead by her. Um, when she's a child and she's kind of like the only witness. Uh, but as we see, like there's some question around memory and, um, and the, and it's sort of about how like her life is impacted. It looks kind of at generational trauma. It looks at um, like, like it, there's a lot of discussion about like race because the main character, her father's black, her mother is white. Um, and it, it talks quite extensively about the relationship between like white women using blackness for their own benefit. Um, and I think it also talks about this idea of like connection, um, how you connect to your memories, how you connect to different people, how lives become like interestingly intertwined. In the first half of the book, there's a lot of repetition where essentially the story of the, the brother being lost happens multiple times in different ways with certain characteristics staying the same, but certain characteristics changing. And there's a huge amount of ambiguity in this book, which I absolutely loved. I thought that was a, a wonderful addition. And I really enjoyed the first half, which is objectively maybe like the more confusing part of the book. Um, I really liked that part uh, I do love this, you know, when they have the little like pointy thing in the cap and you have to like poke. I love that so much. This is like not the color. It's like a very, the color's gooping, if you know, it's like a very bright color for what I was expecting to get. I really liked that part of the book. I, I liked the dazed and confused weirdness of the first part of the book. I also liked the different characters and the voices the different characters had. I, I appreciated that this was a book that you were going to leave having a lot of questions. Um, and overall, I thought it was like 
how do you say this? Like a perfectly fine book. Like there's really very little to like, I don't know, like not, not add, but like it's hard to have, I think a very negative view of this book because I thought it was so like, yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it, the story is interesting. The way it goes about the discussions it's having are very interesting. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't, couldn't imagine this being like anyone's favorite book. Um, that being said, the one thing I really felt about this book was there are just no truly like likable female characters, except for maybe the main character. Okay. So this is, it's one to two parts. So I need to have 108 grams of the developer, which would be like 162, okay. <laughs> I'm using a kitchen scale to measure this out, but I'm also not gonna follow my actual measurements. Like, what the shit? Okay, there we go. Um, but yeah, so I thought it was fine. But okay, there's there's sex. What I would call there's a lot of sexism in the book. I felt where like the only likable female character was the main character, and I didn't necessarily dislike the way that the other, like, I didn't think the other characters were like bad. I thought they had like a good discussion. I thought they were saying something interesting. Like they weren't bad characters for the sake of having bad characters. Like I think they had an interesting and good place. I think um, like the main character, Cassie, or C, her friend in, um, I think it was like Cassandra C, um, like C's friend in college who was like a complete bitch. Like I had a friend like that. Um, and so I really related to that friend. And I thought, especially like imagine that friend, like with the addition of like race involved, I thought was, was very interesting. Um, I thought that but it, it was just something that I noticed where it's like even characters who, for example, the guy character, the other Wayne, there's, there's Waynes in this book, but there's this Wayne character. Um, and he is a, not described as like this very, he's, he's a complex character. I'm not saying he's not likable, but he is complex. And so to me, it felt very interesting to see like his complexity still have some, still have love in it in a way that I felt like our other women in the story just didn't get that. Ooh. Other women in the story just didn't get that treatment, right? Like they were bad and it was all bad versus he was bad, but there was room for him to be like still have compassion in his badness. And I just wish that there would be like a few more female characters who would have that. Like I thought the mom was like rightfully like not a very likable character, but it was somewhat not complex. And I just wish like that relationship maybe had a little bit of a better closing or there was like a little bit more depth to some of these relationships with other women because I felt like it was sort of just this every other woman was bad type of situation. Um, also, I'm going to be um, first going through and applying a layer to the roots and then I'm going to be going and applying, like pulling it into the ends. That's my plan here. Okey These sections are so big but I feel like I can get much more even with those sections. So I'm less, less terrified. So yeah, that's that. That's all I can really say about The Furrows. Like it was a fine book. Like I would say, if you can get it on audiobook, you might as well. The second book that I read was um, Page Boy by Elliot Page. This was a book club pick and I was pretty excited to read it. I felt like I had seen people talk pretty positively about it uh, and I was really excited. I got it on one of the, um, like on Libby, I had it on the Libby app and then tell me why I waited weeks and weeks and weeks only to realize I had the German version saved on Libby and I had to go back 
and get the, uh, I just ended up buying the non-German version. Uh, I felt like a bit of a dipshit, uh, cause I was a bit of a dipshit. Ooh, these sections are not even, I do have like a mirror, so it could be mirroring all of this, but why is all fun in that? We look good, this is, this is good. We feel and look classy. The, uh, so Page Boy. So finally I got my little thingies on Page Boy. And I have to say, I thought this book was a solid okay. Like, I think for a celebrity memoir, it's really good, which is a huge saving grace. And it's like, okay, well you did the kind of, you did the thing that's normally bad good. Like probably a really good celebrity memoir as someone like myself who doesn't read celebrity memoirs, I don't have a great understanding of that concept. So I can't really tell you, oh, what an amazing book that was like compared to other ones, but I'm sure it was. Like it seemed, I think that Elliot Page definitely wrote the book. And I think that he did a very good job like making what could have been a bad book, a good book. Um, that being said, I think that this book like for the stories that Elliot could have said, I think he just wrote it a little too early. It's probably like too big of a section, but we're fine. Um, like, I just don't know how, how much Elliot Page is like done with his own personal story. I think he has so much story left to tell. And I kind of wish that maybe this book would have come out when all that story was left to tell. I feel like Elliot Page had really, um, like repressed a lot of his feelings. And I think that a lot of those feelings would have been good to add into this book and add into the story and they just weren't. I respect that like with, idiot, I'm so stupid. I respect that I'm talking about a memoir and I'm talking about a real human person and their human person life and like their human person desires. And that there is something kind of cruel about saying, well, you should have told your own life story differently. But at the same time, I'm like trying to rectify that with the fact that like, like it was this an enjoyable read, like as a reading experience, how do I feel about it? And I can love and appreciate and respect Elliot as a person, Elliot's journey, but I don't have to like the book, right? I don't know, I feel weird. I feel, it's like that place of like, how is it the, the common refrain like, someone's feelings are valid, someone's story is valid. And it's like, I, I completely agree. Like, yes, it is true. Someone's story, someone's feelings, all of these things are incredibly valid. But again, there is a point of like, this is a book. And there's like narrative to a book, there's structure to a book, there's story to a book. And I'm critiquing that. I'm not critiquing this person's life. So one of the major things I felt about this book, I did not mind that it was written in vignettes. The only challenge of it being written in vignettes is I don't know who the heck these people are. So you're like reading a story about folks and you kind of lose track of who is who and what's happening when. And so you're jumping around from like a child to an adult to a high schooler. And so I think there's an element of that that gets a little confusing because you're you're like, you are trying to imagine like, what are, what are your expectations of a, a person in a moment? And like, there were just moments where I was like, I was like, am I expecting this from a, an adult or from a child? Um, uh, so there, that was one element of the book. And I know I've seen like, I don't know, I was talking with my other people, in my book club, and they were like a little confused about that. Um, I didn't mind it. I think that it's really hard to, tell one's life story from start to finish when there's, you know, some room in between, if that makes sense. Like not everything in your life is necessarily in order things you want to tell in your life story. That being said, one of what I would consider was like the major frustrations is that I think the, I don't know why some of the vignettes were chosen. Like I think there could have been more like wrapping up statements. I don't know if in, in, in high school or college you ever had that like, what's the so what of your thing? Like everything should have a so what. What's the so what of this paragraph? 
um, I suppose it's like what your conclusion, your, your topic sentence, um, why does this matter? And I felt like the chapters could have used a little bit more like wrapping up. Personally, I think the way that this could have happened was just a little bit more insight from Elliot outside of just the standard, like, this is how I felt in the moment. I just wish there was more kind of metacognition, like, how do you feel about the world around you? How did you feel about your feelings? Like, the one of my favorite parts of the book is when Elliot's talking about how queer people get accused of shoving their lifestyle down their face, which, hello, like, straight people, that's literally the story, like, like, you talk about something being shoved down the face, it's the heterosexualization of the world around us. So queer people's stories get like shoved, oh, that's being shoved on our face. But then when straight people tell queer stories, there's a lot of reward given. And I thought that was like, you know, surely it's not the most original idea, but it's very, it, I thought it was very poignant and a really good way to end out that ch particular chapter. And I just wish there was more of that going forward. Um, and there were a few moments like that where I just kind of wish there was maybe a little bit, bit more depth to that, um, that side of Elliot's story. Uh, I, and a lot of this book too, I think part of the discombobulation that this book suffers from comes from the fact that I think Elliot probably wrote a lot of these chapters pre-transition. And so a lot of them really focus on his experience when he was still identifying as a woman. And um, so when he's identifying as a gay woman, uh, um, and I think that poses some challenges in like the continuity of the storyline. And personally, I think there is a sense of maskness to them because of course, when he, he was living and writing those stories, he was wearing a mask. And so to then have this mask and not go deeper like it makes sense why that was happening but at the same time i think that the the book suffers from it because the most authentic most interesting most exciting parts of this book is when elliot is talking about being trans like those like when he's a child and he's trying on the the shorts like those were such good parts of the story and they they were so revealing and so beautiful and I just wish we got more of that. And I think a lot of, a lot of Elliot's self-discovery comes from the pandemic, comes from the sense of loneliness of being the panda in the pandemic, which means that I feel like we just don't get the depth in that part of the story that would have been really beautiful to include. Um, okay, I am gonna go grab my, um, grab my gloves and put on a timer. And then put on a timer for yeah, five minutes. Okay, be right back. I know I just said I was going to wait. How long has it been? Okay. While I wait, let me finish up talking about Elliot Page's uh, memoir. So the, so yeah, I feel like there just wasn't as much grit regarding like what I wanted to hear about because it, I think it was something that maybe Ellie Page hasn't fully processed or didn't want to process in the book or a lot of the book had been written pre-transition. Um, other other thing, name names, there's this horrible scene where someone is just being so violent towards Elliot like in a group of people saying really harsh aggressive homophobic things and I was just like, name names. I'm sorry, that whoever the heck that is should be called out. Like that was actually horrific that anyone would talk to anyone that way, let alone like in public, let alone like, and per like a professional event. Like I'm not saying that it's better if it happens like privately, but there's one thing to be yelled at by a psycho when you're like at a bar and it's like, no one here knows me. I'm like kind of in a private situation. It's another thing to be yelled at that where it's like, oh, you're yelling at me in front of my colleagues. Like I will work with these people throughout my life. And now they've seen me like so degraded by you. Horrible, horrible. Do you like my tape? It says my alma mater on it. So I'm just being a little dapper, discreet woman. One thing I'll say about this book, I'm just gonna then proceed. Um, like a moment of reflexivity for me as a reader was uh, Elliot Page can be somewhat 
crass. Um, he uses the phrase shitting blood a lot. <laughs> Uh, and I really had to stop and kind of think like, uh, how do I feel about this? Because I did not really love those moments in the book. They made me a little uncomfortable, if I'm being honest. But I thought it made me kind of sit back and think like, why am I uncomfortable with this? Am I uncomfortable with this because I feel some type of way about like how this person is choosing to express their masculinity? Um, do I feel this way? Like, basically I was trying to see like, is there some space of like transphobia? Like, is this because like, why, why do I feel this way? And I really had to think about that. And I really appreciated thinking about it, that I really appreciated like going through and asking myself the question of like, this person is maybe communicating in a way I personally wouldn't communicate how like, how am I impacted by this? Why do I have these feelings? And I think how I was able to come down to it was these were moments of like high emotion and they were often like moments of intense embarrassment, intense sadness or something along those lines. And I think that how I ended up feeling was, oh my God, I did this stupid. Um, it's like being like, it's like this really emotional moment and then you're hearing like something that's kind of funny, like something that I would never say in like a moment of sadness or embarrassment. And you're hearing that it just felt really, I don't want to say uncomfortable, but to me it was really uncomfortable because it was like, this is a language I use in my life for humor and it's being used in a moment for emotion. Um, and so it kind of made me think about how else in my life I will go about like understanding and identify use of, you know, that type of language. Um, am I like, maybe someone is being really serious and emotional and I'm identifying it as humor because to me, like cursing is funny, haha. -ha. Um, so yeah, it was just like a moment, a moment that I had with the, uh, with the story. Um, yeah, this is like such a way to do this, right? This is the difference between like professionals, right? Like they don't need to just glob stuff on with their hands. I guess professionals also aren't necessarily doing this to themselves. Also, I was like worried this bleach was expired. Let me tell you, if you can like smell expiration in bleach, this is not expired. <laughs> she is <laughs> working hard. Um, but yeah, so I feel like this definitely needs another, I want to make sure that the ends are nice and saturated. That's really all I have to say about Elliot Page's memoir. Like it's, it's okay. Like if you haven't really read or don't really engage with a lot of like trans stories, I think there's something to, to learn from it. I don't think it's radical. I don't think it's political. I don't think it's particularly deep. And so that's just something to keep in mind. Like you are, you know, it is a celebrity memoir, right? I feel like I have a lot, I don't have a lot of sense of like honesty in celebrity memoirs just because like these are professional people who probably have hell out of their lives. They do want to keep private um, and they're going to do so. Uh, yeah. That's how I felt. Um, going forward, um, uh, the last book that I read was uh, Keith Gesson's A Terrible Country. It is a story about a uh, guy who like wants to be a professor. He's a Russian literature, he's Russian Jewish, but has grown up and lived his whole life in America basically. And, um, it is a, yeah, it's a story of like this man kind of coming to grips with his own Russianness, with the Russian political situation and learning a relationship with his grandmother. I thought the book was very interesting because in a lot of ways him and I could like relate to each other because I am also Russian American who's mostly, who's like exclusively lived in the US. Basically like we came here when I was very, very little. I've been back a lot. I also have a Russian grandmother. 
Um, so there's a lot of areas where I could relate to this character. There are also a lot of areas where I was just like, what are you talking about? Uh, and, and there were small ones. Like for the most part, I think his character was very relatable. Um, and so the, essentially the book goes, he's in Russia, he's trying to have this like relationship with his grandmother. He's, his work is going slow. He's kind of like down on his luck. And he constantly is like grappling with the fact that like Russia is not a particularly easy place to live. There's a lot of political repression. There's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of stuff going down in the country and he's trying to make friends. And I don't know, I think it's very interesting because he's like this master of like, he's knows Russian literature. He has this like theoretical expertise in Russia. And yet like the man can't live there. Like he's struggling just to live in the country because there's just the cultural things he's not used to and can't deal with. Um, so I think for me, one of the big elements of this story that was funny. So he has these like political people that he's friends with. And there's just so many moments where I'm like, this is a story clearly written before 2014. Like he mentions it in the end, but I think he was probably writing the story before 2014. If you're not aware, 2014 is when um, Russia basically like occupied Krim. It's a Crimea. And so um, it just like politically, it seems like uh, the narrator is giving a lot of leeway. He's giving a lot of like, like he's giving a lot of leeway to Russia that I don't think a person would give now. Like I think a person writing the story now, like someone my generation, like my political view of Russia is like as this place is like totally corrupt with a lot of violence. You really have to look out. They will try and screw you. Like everything with like Brittany Griner, I think is a good example. Like when Americans were out here saying like, well, you know, like, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And like, that's not how this works. Like Russia is a place with a lot of drugs. So the thought that like someone had like a little bit of like what weed on them, like that's actually nothing. Like, like murderers go free in Russia because they can like buy off a judge, right? So it's like this, what this person was guilty of is not realizing like you, they were a pawn in a political system. Like that's what they were guilty of because realistically in Russia, like everything is legal until like someone needs a bribe. <laughs> You know, like I've had people who have actively not committed crimes in my life. Like they were not committing a crime, get pulled over and be threatened with arrest unless they wanted to pay a hundred bucks, basically. So like my view of Russia is so different because I'm young, like a younger generation um, than like the narrator and then like the author as well. Um, and so just my, I think, understanding and relationship to a lot of this was very different um but other than that i think it's like to me the larger conversation of the book is that it is fucking annoying like uh, the main character andre he's just all the time he's just whinging the whole time he's complaining he's rah, 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 like no one freaking likes me like oh my god everything's terrible and he's complaining and complaining and complaining like I listened to a lot of stuff on 2x speed. I had to listen to this book on 2.5x speed because it was so boring at times. Just his complaints and his complaints and his complaints. And it's like, man, like, stop freaking complaining so much. Like, it, it got to the point where it wasn't even like purposeful. It wasn't even interesting complaining. Um, and I was getting so over it so quickly. Um, but so that's like a book where it's like, if you want a story about Russia from the context of this book takes place in 2008, if you want that context, this has a good a good base to it. I think it does have, and it has a lot of honesty to it because this is a person who does like understand Russia and Russian culture. Um, but that being said, there's like a big goop right there. That being said, um, uh, that being said there, it's not like a particularly fun book to read. Um, yeah, it's not particularly fun to read. I do think one of the more interesting conversations that the book brought up was like, what what do these like political people, people who study Russia, like what do they do for Russia? I think there was some amount of reflexivity there where it's like you have all these folks who are claiming like, like studying this place and then being experts in it. But like, are they really? For me, this is like a lot of um, people who will go to Russia and then they'll write books about it. And then it's like, oh, they're like an expert in Russia. And then they'll see the most unhinged stuff. And you're like, oh, you just kind of were here. 
you didn't really like know the culture, you didn't know the people. Um, and so whenever I like see someone who is like, oh, I work for the State Department, now I'm writing a book about Russia, like I always take that with a grain of salt. I have, one of our family friends worked in the consulate and he says, he's like, these Americans know nothing about Russia, right? And like, they're the ones in charge of reporting back to the US, like what's going on in this country. And like culturally, they just have no freaking clue. Um, so I definitely like appreciate that at the very least, like this is a book that if you're reading as an American, you are actually getting like a Russian perspective. Um, Helmstever like is the book, my favorite book, far, far from it. Um, but Keith Gesson's Masha Gesson from Masha Gesson's, oh my God, Keith Gesson is Masha Gesson's brother. Um, I like her books more. You should read her books instead, they're nonfiction. Um, anyway, that being said, uh, that's the reading that I've done. I don't even know what I'm reading right now. Um, I'm dyeing my hair now, that's all I'm doing. But yeah, that's like three books out of 75. So gots to pick up the pace on my reading. Uh, yeah, um, anyway, I will see you in my next video. Uh, I will actually see you, I will show you what my hair looks like. I will not just let this be a mystery, a very weird mystery on my head. Um, I have like 10 minutes and then I'm gonna wash it off. This bleach is giving me a headache. <laughs> I'm dying. Um, yeah, anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. No, no, not bye-bye. Like, the whole point was that I'm gonna show you more. Just stop talking, jeez. I, like, cannot see. So first of all, my roots are, like, way too light. I don't know, I can't see what it looks like because the sun is, like, too bright, but also it looks more visible in the sunlight, so I'm struggling. I was going for, like, a cherry cola look. You guys see it? Let me know.